Hello, Internet. This is Sam Messman from We Make Movies here. And just a quick uh, ethics statement here, which is that while I wasn't paid by Noise Industries to do this, I did receive a few plug-in packages uh, that they licensed to me for this. Um, however, uh, basically anything that I cover in here, I use on my personal projects and on my clients' projects, and I have absolutely no problem fully endorsing all of the plugins that I've included here. Anyway, the first thing you want to do is go to the Noise Industry website, which is noiseindustries.com slash fxfactory. Uh, what you want to do is click on the Download FX Factory button from the main page there, and it's going to download the software, and then uh, once it's done downloading, you're going to want to open it up. And as you can see, some are highlighted and some are grayed out. And if they're grayed out, it means that they're not currently installed and won't show up in Final Cut. When we go into the preferences, we'll go a little deeper into that. So you can see there's little uh, check mark boxes next to them. These are the ones that I have installed personally. And uh, these are the ones that I use and show up in Final Cut. And all you need to do to enable them is click the checkbox and they'll come into Final Cut. Also, when you go into rendering, um, you want to check your limit resolution size. I leave mine at 8K because I do a lot of red work and if I don't have it set there, it's hard for me to work with epic footage. But you can basically render any resolution. That setting's basically there to protect slower computers. So if you have a slower machine, you may want to set it a little bit lower. Um, Anyway, let's go ahead, enough of all this, let's get into Final Cut and go ahead and get started. So what I'll be showing you here is the FX Factory Pro suite of plugins. Um, this is basically the flagship collection and for the most part it's just a supplemental addition of effects, generators, transitions, there's a ton of stuff, I'm not going to cover all of it but it's mostly just an improvement on a lot of the filters and effects that come with Final Cut. But I am going to touch on a couple that I use regularly. Now I'm scrolling through the generators here and what you're looking at, there's a PDF animator and there's a host of different uh, photo templates. But the one I'm going to focus on is the timecode filter. Strangely enough, the timecode filter that ships with Final Cut 10 is simply not very good. And the one that comes with FX Factory Pro is really customizable and it fills in kind of a gaping hole. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with it and the bottom line is it makes it really simple to customize and send out your edits with timecode. You just place the generator on top of your edit and it's going to produce a counter over the duration of it that you can set to minutes, seconds, frames, etc. Now, I've switched over to the transitions here and there's a ton of different transitions that are basically an addition to the Final Cut transitions and they're also um, switching over to the effects. There's a host of different effects that are included and I'm just going to scroll down to give you a sense of just how many come with this. But there's one in particular that I am using constantly. And uh, I'm going to show you what that is. It's called the Sharpen Range Filter. And um, this one has saved quite a few shots. When I click over to this shot here, you're going to see a horrendously out of focus shot from a podcast. Uh, whoever was shooting this may not have been paying as much attention as they should have. Um, and using the sharpen range filter, what it's going to do is allow me to bring this more into focus and take an unusable shot and actually make it usable. And I would already applied this, so I'm just going to click on the preset. But as you can see, turning it on and off, this is now a borderline usable shot. And what this filter does as opposed to the standard Final Cut Sharpen filter is it gives you a lot more control over the area of the image that you're sharpening. And to give you another example, in this next shot, I've applied the same filter and turning it on and off, I've taken a subtly out of focus shot and um, you can see around the face it's kind of blurry and now switching it back on, you'll see this shot is now pretty much perfectly in focus and it's almost like 
um, it wasn't out of focus to begin with and it actually looks great and this has saved countless amounts of takes that ordinarily would have been unusable and in my opinion this filter alone makes this collection worth the purchase price and if you watch this and it all went totally over your head or you just don't feel like doing it well this is what I do for a living so feel free to hire me either to consult on your movie or to finish your film for you if that's what you need so, if you want to get in touch, just drop me an email over at sam at wemakemovies.org. And lastly, if you're wondering what this whole We Make Movies thing is, check us out over at wemakemovies.org. Or if you live in L.A. or Toronto, sign up for our newsletter and then come to one of our events. I'll see you guys next time. And cut! <laughs>